So we just calculated another equation for the velocity of uh, something that's undergoing simple harmonic motion. And now it's time to put everything together and do all the different equations for energy. Now I think it would help to actually take a look at our basic situation again. So I've just done it here, except that means this is going to look really complicated. Let me just try to do this here and move it. There we go. So something like this right here, and I'll just say forget about the equilibrium here. Whoa, this is going slowly. There we go. So this one right here, I'm just going to uh, delete that one. So what we have for our equations for energy, well, one of the first ones we could ask for, what's the kinetic energy? So what's EK at any given point? Well, our kinetic energy is given by 1 half mv squared. And we just found that v was equal to plus or minus omega times the square root of x0 squared minus x squared. We did that in the last video here. We just found that. This was the answer here. So because of that, then, we can just put it all in there. So that means the kinetic energy will just be equal to 1 half times m times this thing squared. Now then we don't need the plus or minus at that point. So then we'll have omega squared times square root squared. Well, that just undoes a square root. So then we're just left with this. So there's the equation for the kinetic energy. That's pretty nice and actually quite easy. What if we want the maximum kinetic energy, EK max? Maybe we want to know that. Well, where does EK max happen? EK max happens when x equals 0. So I'm going to say that. So at x equals 0. This is the important thing. So all you have to do then is take your equation for EK and set x equal to 0. Well, that means then that EK equals 1 half m omega squared, and you just have x0 squared because this one cancelled out. So that's it. That's your EK. I should probably be careful here and say EK max. So the kinetic energy maximum. So the maximum kinetic energy happens then. Remember what each of these means. Remember that um, m is the mass, omega is the angular frequency, x0 is the maximum displacement, and x is just your displacement at any given time. Now what if you want to know the total energy? The total, total energy. Uh, that we can also find as well, which I think is actually pretty cool. So if we want ET, the total energy, well that's equal to EP plus EK. That's true. Uh, but we can use EK max. The reason why we can use EK max is because of this graph that we did up above. Remember when we were looking at the graph of energy and we did it um, so when we have maximum kinetic energy here, maybe we'll do it here. When we have maximum kinetic energy, let's say over here, at maximum kinetic energy, we have minimum potential energy, and that still gives us the total energy. See, we can pick this random point here. We could have also picked when we have no kinetic and then we have maximum potential energy. That's also the case. But let's just say we picked it here. So if we want, when we have minimum potential energy, we have maximum kinetic energy. So we can say then that the total energy is going to be equal to the maximum kinetic energy. So that's what we can state here. We can say that, uh, well, we'll just write it down here. So we can use EK max. In other words, we can say that the total energy is equal to EK max. Why is that? Because at x equals 0, EP equals 0, and EK equals EK max. That's why. Because at that point, we still do this plus this, right? So we say EP, which is 0, 0 plus EK max, it's just EK max. So in that case, at this special case then, the total energy is just going to be the same as the maximum kinetic energy. Therefore, the total energy is the same here. 1 half m omega squared x0 squared. Remember, x0 is your maximum displacement. Maybe I should write that down somewhere, just so you don't forget x equals your displacement in meters, and x0 is your maximum displacement, also in meters. Sometimes it's called A, which is your amplitude. And don't forget, uh, omega is your angular frequency. 
It's just nice to have it written somewhere nearby so we can sort of see everything. That's in seconds to the minus one. And M is your mass, which is in kilograms. Of course, E is your energy, and that is in joules just in case you need to know what everything means. So here we go, we got total energy. Well, that was pretty awesome. There's one last thing we might want to do though. What about the potential energy? We can be a little bit cheap about it. We can say, well, the total energy equals the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. So therefore, we can say that the potential energy is just the total energy minus the kinetic energy. We can say that. And because of that, well, we can say what the um, total energy is and the kinetic energy. Now keep in mind what the total energy was. Total energy was just half m omega squared x zero squared. So that's one half m omega squared x zero squared minus, and the kinetic energy was equal to, we'll see it over here, Kinetic energy at any point was half m omega squared x zero squared minus x squared. So one half m omega squared x zero squared minus x squared. This is my potential energy. This may look ugly. Uh, actually, it does look ugly. But this is one term. This is another term, and it's sort of partially factorized. Let's go a step further because they both have a half m omega squared in common. And then I can say, I'll just combine them. So I have x zero squared minus this whole thing here and this minus x zero squared minus minus x squared, which becomes a plus x squared. Well, these ones cancel out. So then I get EP equals one half m omega squared x squared. So now I have all my equations. I have potential energy in case I wanted that. Um, by the way, this also is the same thing as saying one half K X squared. That's also the same. That was the definition of potential energy. Um, and that actually, you can see that's actually, maybe you want to see why that is. I mean, you have your half, you have a half, you have an X squared, you have an X squared. What about this M omega squared here? Where did that come from? You know, how is that equal to K? And that actually is the case. That's because we have uh, omega was equal to square root of K over M. Remember K is your spring constant. And we have, this is your angular frequency. So your angular frequency was square root of K over M. If you want that, then what do you get with M omega squared? Well, m omega squared is equal to m times this squared. So that's going to be k over m, right? Because this thing right here squared is just k over m. Well, that means your m's cancel out. So that means m omega squared equals just k. That's where this came from because your m's canceled out. Because of that, you're left with a k here, k. And that means m omega squared is k. See, m omega squared is k. So that's sort of where this all came from. So now... Although I showed you the derivations, I suppose you can always just use them if you need them, just look them up. But I like to show where it comes from. I think you get a better understanding of it as you go along, as long as you understand. And again, I think it all stems from this one diagram here, and knowing that kinetic plus potential energy equals the total. And then you can work out everything from there.